Hello and welcome to Smooth Fusion Sitefinity version 11 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a page. So I've already navigated to pages and you will see here the page tree as well as options to alter those existing pages as well as create a page. So let's create a page. I'm going to title this demo and the next option you have is to put this page at the top level or underneath a parent page. The parent page is a top level navigation, the under parent page is tier 2 or tier 3 navigation. So for the sake of this demo we're going to put this under services. One thing you may have noticed whenever you added your title the URL for the page also automatically updated and whenever I selected that as a parent page it also updated the URL. However, this is alterable by clicking change. You can change the title uh, that you are using in your URL and you can also update the entire URL structure. Next we have enable multiple URLs for this page. If you're familiar with vanity URLs, that's what this is. So you can inject those here and if you do not want those to function as vanity URLs and instead redirect to the actual page URL, you can check this and set that up that way. Next we have show and navigation. A majority of Sitefinity sites do use the page tree for the navigation. So if you are using the page tree to populate your navigation, then you want this item to show in the navigation, you can check this box. Next we have use this page only to group other pages and this page redirects to another page. I'm calling these out together because each of these has one un as a unique characteristic in that they are not pages of their own. They may appear within your page tree, but they do not have a template or a body to that page. Group pages are used purely as parent pages and for organizational purposes, and those will set to redirect to the first subpage if it is clicked and included in the navigation. Next is redirect to another page. So you can set this URL to redirect to an internal page or an external page. A use case for an external page that is not an actual external page is using a file. So perhaps you have a file that you want users to redirect to and download automatically, you can set that there. Next we have the title for search engines which also appears as the title in the tab. This is auto generated from your title but it is changeable. Next you have your template section. By default you have a template already selected whichever is set as the default for the site that is changeable through select another template. Next we have descriptions and keywords. These are meta descriptions and meta keywords that can be set per, per the page. Next we have advanced options. Some of these options are specific to developers, some are more specific to content editors. The allow site search to index this page. If your site has a site search and you want this page included in that index, you can allow it here. Allow external search engines to index, which is just simply allowing external search engines to index that page or not. Require SSL, this is typically set across the entire site, but if you do it on a page by page basis, you will check this box here. Next, we have enable view state and rad script editor and allow parameter validation. These are typically settings altered by a developer if needed. Caching options, so this is typically, unless there's a specific use, set to as, whole, as for the whole site. You can change it between no standard and long caching if you like, but as the whole site is set to one of these three options. Canonical URLs can be enabled and disabled here. If you have any unique HTML that you want added to a single page, you can do so here. This next code behind type for ASP.NET developers is for developers, so that can be disregarded. Related images is something unique to this demo page and likely will not be there for your page when you're creating it. So now that we've created our page and modified the properties, it will take us to the page editor view. Those properties for that page can be accessed through the page editor by looking at titles and properties, or you can navigate to it from the pages landing page in the back end. So I'm not going to go through an entire page setup, but over here on your right side, you have your layout items where you can add these to the page, which is what your widgets will live inside of. And then you have your content view, which is where you select your widgets that you would like to add to the page. You have MVC widget and web form widgets. You should default to using MVC unless there is a specific use case that requires you to use web forms. 
Now you have a number of other options here that come out of the box like navigation, data script, styles, login, users. We won't run through the usage of each of these, but you will see the out of the box widgets first and then followed by the custom widgets that your developer has created. So I'm going to publish this page and voila, we have created our Sitefinity page. Now one thing you might note is that that page template did not have much styling at all. And so the reason for that is because of this demo site does not have the templates completely formatted. However, if your templates are being built correctly, then you will have things like your header and side navigation and footer in the template level so that you're not having to add those on every page creation. So that is all for this video. For more Sitefinity tips, tricks, Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to follow us on Twitter and our blog. Thank you.